Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's October 28th. We are continuing our session of Introduction 2. Uh, we've covered Introduction to Cruises, River Cruises, and we are now at Introduction to All-Inclusive Resorts. Um, as we did at the beginning with the cruises, we compared, you know, agents that are selling cruises or selling uh, all-inclusives, we're kind of comparing what the difference is between the all-inclusives and the cruise clients, because people need to understand whether they, maybe they've only cruised before and now they're ready for an all-inclusive or vice versa. Uh, we want to be able to explain clients what the difference is. And we're going to start with actually what is an all-inclusive. So um, an all-inclusive or what we call the true all-inclusive will have, um, will be a resort style hotel that has um, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Technically, all the meals will be included. Specialty dining is going to be included, which is, again, a difference from uh, cruise ships where that's going to be an extra charge. But for the most part, I would say nine out of 10, uh, the restaurants or the specialty dining are going to be included. Beverages are also going to be included. Soft drink, sodas, juices, cocktails, mocktails going to be included as well. No need to purchase a beverage package or an alcohol package. Um, there are levels of alcohol, whether it's premium, uh, you know, standard or even we, we call it local brands. And we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, so food, drinks, entertainment, the shows, um, a resort, an all-inclusive resort when you compare it to a regular hotel that might just have, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or uh, has restaurants, will also have performance at night, performances at night. Um, whether it's a live band or maybe even they'll go all out in like a semi-Broadway show, like a Michael Jackson show, or a lot of things that they have in a lot of these resorts. Um, one more thing that they will have that is comparable to uh, a cruise ship is the kids club, right? There's a kids program. Uh, some all-inclusives will start the kids program from the age of one. So they'll have like a baby club. And some will end it at 12 and some will continue it as teens. Okay. So again, when a person goes to a hotel, right. And they say, we don't want an all-inclusive. We're only looking for, we're okay. We just want breakfast. Note that a regular hotel won't have the shows at night. They might have a performer or, you know, a live band or something. Maybe if it's a, you know, large enough resort or a hotel, but the, the kids club, if they have it, will be either for extra payment or it might operate maybe four or five hours a day. Um, they'll close for lunch. They'll have options. You won't have child care for, let's say, the, the vast majority of the day. Um, and, and with these resorts, you can also do sometimes after uh, like a babysitting program. So again, um, shows, food, drinks, kids club. It, it's and when you go to an all-inclusive, it's an experience where you technically don't really need to leave the property. Everything is being done on property. You don't need to leave. Um, most of these resorts are actually located in places where you can't really, there's nothing outside, right? It's, 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 um, it's it's in a place where you can't just walk out and maybe see some sites, uh, you know, walking distance because they're located, they're more secluded if, if possible. Um, so where, where are these all-inclusives located? Uh, the majority of them will be in Mexico, uh, whether it's the East Coast of Mexico, or the West Coast of Mexico, uh, Dominican Republic, and then Jamaica. That's the majority of all-inclusive resorts that are out there. Yes, there are some in the Bahamas. There are some in like Antigua, Grenada, Turks and Caicos, uh, um, uh, St. Lucia, Curacao. You will find some all-inclusive in these resorts, Aruba, but the destination, when someone says, I want to go to an all-inclusive resort, the three destinations that have to come in mind to you and for your client would be Mexico, Dominican, Jamaica. These are the three. 
Now, if they want to go somewhere else, like Aruba, which is not a destination for all-inclusive in general, the, the island itself tries to promote the restaurants that are there, uh, the nightlife, getting out of the resort, seeing the place, spending money outside of the resort. That's what the island wants, right? That's, that's, their, that's their goal. They do have some all-inclusive resorts there, but that also means because there, there's not a lot of them, the price of the all-inclusive will be much, much higher than if you compare, right? Cancun has hundreds of hotels uh, that are all-inclusive um, compared to Aruba, which has less than 10 or, you know, like 12, depending. Yeah, some will have like a meal plan. So uh, I also mentioned the fact that it says, uh, you know, true all-inclusive. Uh, some people will like to have an all-inclusive resort in the U.S. or all-inclusive. Uh, as a general rule, there are no all-inclusives in the U.S. There's currently one that is adults only and is located in uh, in the Keys, uh, the, the bungalows. But besides that, there is no true all-inclusive resort. There's also one in Hawaii, Lahana. But um, there are some dude ranches. There are some hotels that have meal plans where you can have breakfast, lunch, dinner, or they will have breakfast and a credit towards dinner. Most of them will not include alcohol at all. Um, so there is nothing that will actually compare to an all-inclusive resort um, that is in the Caribbean, Mexico and, and the Caribbean. There are some in Europe, there are some in, in Japan. There, you will find some around the world. But again, the majority and for the American clients and Canadian clients, people that are calling you, um, again, Mexico, Dominican, Jamaica are the ones that's supposed to pop up. And when you're having that initial conversation with the client, see if that's where they want to go. Now, if they said they don't want to do that and they want to, you know, venture out again, Grenada, St. Lucia, Bahamas, they will have less options. They will be more expensive, but there are options, right? The, you, there are a few options there. Um, also, something to know with uh, an all-inclusive, they will come in three types. They will have a family resort, right? Uh, everyone can, or a resort for everyone. Some of these resorts will have a section that would be adults only. And uh, also you will have resorts that are completely adults only. Uh, they will put a lot of resorts now that are adults only next to a family friendly property, uh, mostly for weddings or you know for, for that kind of purpose. But um, in general, you won't find regular hotels that are meaning hotels that are not all inclusive that are adults only. So if a client comes to you and says, I want an adults only property, that almost automatically means it's going to be an all inclusive and then goes to that. Um, there is, I want to say a misconception about the food at an all inclusive. Uh, it's probably people that maybe have been there before or uh, like way back years ago, or stayed at the, one of the lower end properties. Um, people say the the food because again, it's let's say a buffet, and it's it's for a thousand people or two thousand people, and the food is not good. There's no selection. I don't want to eat at the buffet every day for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, so I, I would say it's a misconception because a lot of the new resorts will have in addition to the main restaurant, which is a buffet, will be a specialty dining restaurant, uh, a steakhouse, Italian, French. Some of the resorts will have one of these restaurants as an adults only. Uh, some will even go out and do like a chef's table, which will have some extra cost to it. But if a person, um, let's say, is ready to go to another property and then go to eat at a restaurant at every time, uh, and actually pay for it, then these could be great options. Um, so a lot of the resorts now have a lot of options. Uh, I, I just saw a presentation of sandals, the new uh, new sandals and new beaches that are opening, the new sandals, I think Duns River, 
um, I think they have 11 or 12 restaurants on site. So Indian restaurant and Italian restaurant and French restaurant, you will have the option to dine at a restaurant where you sit down and people serve you food and it's good service and it's good food. Now, if you go to a low end three star property and that doesn't have too many specialty dining restaurants, um, the food quality is going to be lower. There's the service is not going to be as good. And yes, you will be disappointed. But uh, in this specific situation, you get what you paid for. Um, as a rule of thumb, at these all-inclusive areas where it's uh, Mexico, Dominican, Jamaica, I try and do five stars. Five stars, nothing below five stars. There are there's a difference between all of these five stars. Um, but if everyone now gets five stars, right? There's there's a lot of properties that in the U.S. won't get three stars. They're getting five stars. Um, but that I think that should be the bare minimum. Um, if people say that they're foodies, there are some resorts and properties and chains that say that they're for foodies. Again, you won't find, for the most part, you won't find Michelin chef um, restaurants at an all-inclusive, actually, except this one, the one in the back. Uh, so you rarely will find a Michelin chef restaurant at an all-inclusive resort that will be included. Um, I asked some of the people that were here just before in the break room, um, this is the Grand Velas at Los Cabos. Um, it's one of the higher end, most expensive, all-inclusive, best all-inclusive, we'll call it. All the res As you can see, the hotel is like a kind of like a U-shaped, but not, not really a U, like half of a W. Uh, all the rooms are uh, ocean view. Um, Everything is included, including one of the one of the restaurants there has the the chef has a Michelin star. So uh, there are really good all inclusives. There's a few Grand Velas around the uh, in in Mexico, um, and there mm -hmm. are some other options that are out there uh, that can cater to people that consider themselves as foodies or you know they like food. And if not, there are some restaurants, some resorts that will offer. Um, uh, an elevated experience for a cost uh, at an all-inclusive restaurant. You will still get to the, maybe the adults only concept, the shows. And then if you want to eat at a really, really fine dining restaurant that people actually book outside and, and come and pay a lot of money for, uh, that exists. Um, same as food, we can talk about the alcohol level. There are some resorts that will have um, we'll call it local brands. So the alcohol is going to be uh, not so great, okay? Local Mexican, Dominican, um, stuff that is not considered. Um, again, we're not even talking about top, like top shelf. It's, it's going to be, you know, lower, lower brands, not the stuff that you get to see at home. Uh, the next level up will be, and that's most of the... Um, you know, the five-star properties, they're going to have uh, the, the stuff that you know, the alcohol that you know, the tequila that you know, everything. Um, I always recommend to people when they're booking at a resort not to ask for rum and Coke or vodka with apple, with uh, orange juice or something, but say the brand specifically. So, you know, if you want uh, Jack and Coke, just say that's what you want. If you want Bacardi and Coke or... or or Captain Morgan, whatever you want, just ask for the actual brand. Otherwise, they are going to bring you the local one. If you are not a, I mean, I'm not a huge drinker, but I do know that some local brands, if you drink a little too much, you will wake up the next day with a big, big headache uh, compared to other the better brands out there. So if you can, and you're at the bar and you see something, uh, and you ask for something, they won't go and grab from the shelf. They will take it from the bottom and pour something. And that's going to be the local brand. Um, and at some resorts where it's a little more high end, higher end, uh, you will find top shelf. Uh, the J Johnny Walkers, the, you know, the better labels. I'm sorry, I'm not a huge, so I, <laughs> I can't even, I don't even know the differences between them. But for people who do, uh, there are some resorts that offer uh, top shelf. 
um, in some of the resorts um, where they offer um, upgraded areas like uh, the AM resorts will have something that they call the preferred club, right? The, the blue diamond, the royalty will have a diamond club and, and all of, and there's a lot of, it's kind of like the executive floor entrance to a lounge, entrance to an, uh, 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 a pool area, a beach area that is just for these people in that lounge normally, or the bar that serves that club, they will have elevated drinks. Again, better better brands. If you have people that are, um, they want that top tier, that's where you wanna go. Now, all of these differences of, you know, restaurant with a Michelin chef or one that has a chef's table or kids club for one-year-olds or, um, uh, or the, the top shelf or all of these options are actually good for you because not the all inclusives are not equal to each other. When someone comes to you and says, you know, I have a one year old, I have a two year old, or we want to go to an adults only, or uh, I want top shelf drinks, you will know where to send them. That automatically limits, or because as we've mentioned, there are hundreds of hotels in Cancun. When someone comes to you and says, I want a resort that offers childcare for my two-year-old, that automatically drops it to less than 10. Uh, same with, you know, they want the upgraded drinks. Okay, it narrows it down from 1,000 to 70. And then you will go from there. The more questions you will ask, the more that you will know about the differences between the resorts uh, will help you to narrow down and find and match make uh, the resort to your clients. Um, I know some of you have been uh, are selling FITs in Europe, and some there is also a misconception with agents saying um, everyone sells all inclusive. It's it's easy, right? You just put the flight, you put New York or San Francisco to Cancun, sort it out, whatever happens, and you just pick it. You read reviews and you go from there. But it's not; they're not created equal. The more resorts you will know, the more brands that you will know, you will understand the differences between each and every of the chains of the brands of the locations, and you'll be able to match the resort to the client. That's the most work that you will need to do at an all-inclusive, right? There's no, they won't do too many tours, which we can talk about it, but they, they won't step out of the resort too much because it's, um, it's inclusive. Everything is in there. They don't need to step. They just want an R and R. But the most of the work will be at the beginning, trying to find and match the property. When it's a regular hotel, you care about the location. You care that the room is going to be clean, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't really matter. They're going to leave the property. They're going to go on tours. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. At an all inclusive, they are going to spend. 85%, 90% of their time, sometimes 100% of their time at the resort. So you want to make sure that the resort might have a, a nightclub, uh, entertainment at night. Maybe they're looking for more of a spa, something that is more quiet, um, multiple restaurants, kids club, uh, activities by the, by, by the water, um, uh, meaning uh, non-motorized uh, sports, which are included in a lot of the resorts. Uh, scuba diving is included in some of the brands like sandals, beaches. The more questions, the more what is on their wish list, the easier it's going to be for you to find the property um, for them. Some of the properties, as we've mentioned, where they have an adults only and uh, family friendly property, uh, we call it pay one, stay at one, play at all. Um, so if you're staying at, for example, uh, Dreams Playa Mujeres in, in uh, Costa Mujeres, Mexico, and you stay at the Dreams because you have kids, you can drop the kids at the kids club and you can head over to Secrets. It's a five, seven minute walk and you could stay there at the adults only resort, see no kids, maybe some party, a phone party, get some drinks, get some everything, and then go back to the kids later on. Um, 
Same thing for dinner. You can go to you can go to dinner at the buffet because the kids will love the buffet. There's so many options. They don't care. So you can go there at 5:30, finish with the kids, drop the kids at the daycare, and then go and have a, uh, let's Bordeaux, which is a French restaurant specifically at Dreams. Or there's a few restaurants at the Secret Side where you can also go and dine. Uh, so you do have that option, and that's may be enticing for a few of the clients where they want the all-inclusive for the kids because that's where they eat. They don't want to go and sit at a fine dining restaurant where the kids just want burgers and, and, and pizza. But you can go with them in, at, at the beginning. They'll have whatever they want. You can, you can eat some fries as, as an appetizer and then you drop them at Kids Club and then you can go and have dinner as, you know, a couple of adults or, you know, a few adults, a few uh, people going together. Um, a lot of these resorts, by the way, will have, this one doesn't, but uh, we'll have, uh, well, this one actually does, uh, swim out rooms, um, you know, where people party together and stuff like that. So, you know, drop the kids somewhere and, and go from there. Uh, that, that concept of, stay at one, play at the, the other it also works for, uh, we call it uh, multi-generational groups or weddings. Uh, let's say a bride and groom wants to get married, wants to invite people that might have kids, the bride and groom might have kids. Um, you can book, let's say the bride and groom doesn't have kids, they can stay in the adults only side, they can bring the majority of the group uh, to the family friendly side and then have the wedding on the family friendly side, everyone meets together and then the bride and groom goes um, to the adults only. Similar with you know, the diamond club, the preferred club, the grandparents, it's kind of like a resort within a resort, right? The hotel within a hotel, like the cruise ships have with the, the Haven, the, 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 M the MSC um, uh, uh, club, the yacht club. So you, the, the parents can, the grandparents can go to the, uh, preferred suites and the rest can be at the regular property. Um, they will hang out together for dinner, for whatever, for the reception, for whatever. And then they will go to their area, to their private pool area, lounge, where not everyone is, um, located. So you do have the option. Again, we're uh, this reason for the intro to all inclusive is to give you an idea in case you haven't done an all inclusive in the last five, six years um, um, to, to, to understand what is out there so you can offer it to the clients. Um, there's also a big difference between a large resort and a small resort. Some people will say, I don't want a large resort, right? Too many people. Same as a cruise ship, right? Icon of the Seas just came out. They've mentioned that with the staff at full, triple, quad occupancy, 10,000 people. But it also means that that's the biggest, that's a really big space. If you're going to a small property that has 100 rooms and they have two restaurants, that means um, 200 people for two restaurants. If you're going to a hotel that has 500 rooms or 600 rooms and they have 16 restaurants, first of all, you'll have more choices. Second of all, it's less rooms per restaurant that they'll have to divide. So, and, and it's going to be a lot more space. There are some properties will have five acres for 16 rooms, right? The luxury ones. And we'll be able to, you know, to have those as well. But for the most part, where it's a bigger property, they will have more things to do. They'll have a bowling alley and a movie theater and a, and a theater for the shows and whatever. And not everyone is going to be at the same place at the same times. So they'll have seven, nine pools. They will have several restaurants. They will have options um, for you. So it won't feel that crowded, even though it's a big property. And then you will have a lot of things to do. Um, some of the pushback from people, um, I don't want to go to an all-inclusive because uh, I'm planning on, you know, touring. I'm, I'm planning on doing some excursions. I don't want to waste the money, spend the money and be out of the property. And then I'm, I'm kind of losing, right? Because I'm, I'm losing the meals. Um, for the most part, most of these excursions, they're not, you know, starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 10 p.m. So they will have breakfast, 
they will have dinner on property. For the lunch, they can either pack, some of these resorts will pack lunch or some will make some sandwiches or something to go. Um, and if not, you will eat outside for lunch. But the breakfast, the dinner, the show, everything will be included. And, and some tours will start at 11 and some tours will, add, you will end at three. So you can have an early lunch or late lunch if you want, and then just have a late dinner or order room service at any time. You come back to the property at 10 p.m., um, order room service. It's included. You, you don't need to come back from your tour at a regular hotel, and then it's 10 p.m., the restaurants are closed, you, what, you need to do Uber Eats, you need to find a pizza place that does delivery and wait for an hour for it. When you are at an all-inclusive you will find a place that is open or a room service is going to be 24 seven. Not all resorts will have room service 24 seven, which is again, also something that you can ask. Maybe if you have a qualification form and you ask clients, what's important for you? Do you need childcare for one and up or you know, under kids under four? Do you need 24 hour room service? Do you need an adults only property? Um, you can ask these questions and if they tag it, it will make it easier for you to create some sort of a filter so you'll know um, what to offer. So again, an all-inclusive property can be really good for you know families that are going, adults only, multi-generation. Uh, even if they are going on tours, now, I've compared many, many times resorts in the Mexico area where people say, you know what, we, we want to go outside and we want a tour. And you compare a good property, not a residence in Days in Motel 6, a good Grand Hyatt, Playa del Carmen, uh, Hilt, something that is not an all-inclusive, but a good property that doesn't even offer the childcare and all of it, and, and will include breakfast. And then you will Consider how much lunch is going to be. Consider how much dinner is going to be. Maybe you're gonna, maybe you're gonna go and see a show, or maybe not. So maybe taxis. Even if you're just roaming somewhere, and you add everything, everything adds up. There is so much competition, and these resorts buy food in bulk. You don't really get the pricing for for a meal when you're outside of the property, it's going to be, you know, $40 a person, 45. And, and the kids maybe just order one and maybe they don't like it. It's not like the U S yeah, let's return it and get, it doesn't really work that way. Um, and the buffet, they'll have many options. It's very cost efficient. It will make a lot of sense to go to an all-inclusive. If you're going to Cancun, I've done a few trips where I did not do an all-inclusive in Mexico, uh, and that's mostly on like free stays or, you know, points with Marriott or stuff like that. I ended up spending more than I would probably go with, you know, like an agent rate. So that's what I would compare, right? Um, because the breakfast, lunch, and dinner is just going to be that much expensive. I'm not even talking about drinks because I rarely drink. But if you're looking at a, you know, at a $10, $11 for a drink or $15 a drink, depending on what it is that you drink, it adds up and everything's going to be so much more expensive. Um, anyone, before I continue, anyone have has any questions uh, regarding the all-inclusive concept? I do. Um, which ones are known, like, do you think, in your opinion, <clears throat> are best for um, destination weddings? Like, like, who has the best wedding coordinators where they'll be taken care of? I, I want to, I mean, in terms of weddings, which I'm thinking of doing maybe intro to weddings, I, I wrote it down to myself. There are some resorts that will say we only do one wedding and one wedding uh, on property a day or, you know, two. Some will do like six or seven. Um, there are a lot of brands that are focused on weddings. If the resort has a wedding department, for the most part, they will do a really good service. Uh, something to bear in mind with the weddings. Some resorts will start working with the bride six months prior. Some will start 30 days prior. So it, it depends on that. And you can, you can find out um, most of them, most of the all-inclusive, most of the known brands will have multiple areas for uh, weddings. 
some of them will have uh, chapels if if it's important if they if they want that specific wedding although i always recommend for my bride and groom to get married in the us and just do a symbolic wedding it's so much easier so much cheaper but in case they do want to kind of create it in the chapel there are so many options um some are better than other but most of them are pretty good uh, I haven't had, I've, I've done weddings at a Rio. I've done a wedding at the Half Moon in Jamaica. Both were really, really good for the wedding. Um, it, it, again, depends on the crowd, depends on what people need. There, I don't think there's one that is uh, better than the other in terms of service. Uh, I always keep, uh, you know, hands on the pulse, finger on the pulse, uh, just to make sure that um, they're, my bride and groom and clients are take, being taken care of. But for the most part, it's it's good. Something to remember with weddings. Again, I am thinking of doing an intro too. People kind of have the misconception of we're at adults only. We're at an all inclusive, and we're doing a party, and we're doing uh, the you know the wedding reception. So the food should be included, and everything should be included because we're already at an all inclusive. And it won't be because it will be set up in a specific area. They'll have to bring the food. Sometimes they'll make food specifically. They have to bring the servers and the setup. So it it, it is going to be an extra cost. <laughs> that was one of my questions. I went to a webinar. I think it was Hilton. Um, and they recently, or Marriott, they now have the Royalton. And they were showing uh, a wedding. Or maybe it was a Hilton. I don't remember. But it was 7,000 or 11,000 different packages. Does that include food when they say that price? Oh, no, no, yes. Or are they just Normal. talking about like the DJ, the ceremony? It will normally, the, the food portion and the alcohol portion is going to be the cheapest for them. Because technically, again, you're at an all-inclusive and you're subsidizing a dinner. So so yes, when you see like a five, it will be like 5,000 for maybe up to 40 guests or something. But the things that won't be included, I mean, um, maybe uh, a DJ, photographer, uh, maybe a dance floor that they'll set up on the beach. Um, you know, people tend to bring some, you know, like a drum circle, uh, maybe upgraded uh, uh, flowers or things on the chairs. Um, so that won't be in the basic one, but 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 yeah, it's it's not it's not going to be as expensive as doing it in the U.S. in the states because as I've mentioned, alcohol food is kind of already there. Um, yeah, it seems super affordable. And for the guests as a group, do you get a better rate or is it this kind of the same? Group is a group. There are specific perks that are for weddings because they know they need it. Uh, sometimes a bridal shower, a bridal room, a, a bridal suite where they can uh, get ready before the wedding. Uh, they will have maybe a reception or a, uh, uh, we call it semi-private semi-private dinner, meaning they will go to one of the restaurants, they will uh, rope a specific area within the restaurant. So it's not just for them, but they, they will have that, um, maybe a reception, like a cocktail reception and one of the areas where they'll just serve high, house wine and champagne. And so these are normally for regular groups that won't interest them, but a wedding group would be interested. So the rate is normally the same, and the perks are normally the same, but there are some that are geared more towards uh, wedding. And bride. you were saying like, you don't drink that much um, you, and you still feel like it's worth the, the. I always think of all-inclusive as worth it if you drink, but you're saying like, even if you don't, it's still a good value. Uh, yeah, de definitely. Again, food, the activities, it's not just the food and drink. It's not just the alcohol. It's not just... It's everything else that I've mentioned that 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 we have the option. We eat quite a bit. I have two boys. The the my oldest is thirteen. He's six feet uh, six feet tall. He eats like five. So if I go to a restaurant and that that's easily we sit down for dinner with the normal regular restaurant here in the U.S. It's one hundred and fifty two hundred dollars easily. Wow. You know, and when you're at an all inclusive, yes, you'll get a beer. You'll get, you know, you'll get a drink. You'll, you'll try a pina colada when, you, you know, it's, you know, you're already there, right? But uh, when it's included, you tend to use it a little bit more. I like, and a lot of people, the concept of an all-inclusive is you pay in advance. Also something that I haven't mentioned, the tips, right? Gratuities were on the ship. It's not, 
In some resorts, it's included. They won't charge you extra for it if you want to, you know, give tips and whatever. The, there is kind of like a guidelines of what you, you know, what you want to do and give. But for the most part, they won't charge you extra for it. it it's included. You can leave your wallet in your room or in, at home, technically, and everything is going to be set up for you. You don't need to worry about prices when you look at menus and drinks and everything included. It's it's easy. It's you, you pay and forget about it. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know what? We've mentioned tips a little bit. Um, as, as I said, tips are are at some resorts will say that. You don't need to tip like sandals beaches or some other properties that say tips are included you don't need to pay except if you have like a butler service which again we haven't touched on that but the higher categories will have like a concierge style butler service not all butlers are created equal as well some it's just someone who will give you their whatsapp number and will help you maybe make dining reservations maybe get a golf cart for you or something like that. And some will actually even come and set your uh, tub for, you know, your bubble bath or, or bring the food in and you're, you're in a show and you want dinner already set up on the table for you. There are some butler service where you call and they'll have dinner ready for you at the table. Let's say you booked a one bedroom and you have a, a dining room in, in your uh, property. They will do that for you. So again, not all butlers are created equal. Some just say they're butlers, but it's technically just kind of like a concierge or someone who can help you with really minor things. Can you get the um, can you get the bellboy to bring uh, to take our luggage? Can or something like that? That's that's most of the butler concierge that are out there. Um, so if you want to tip them, they normally you know maybe like a higher tip, but depending on what it is that they do for you um at the bar you know a couple of couple of bucks for a drink or you know depending on how long you sit there uh the bell person the people who drive you with the um car service from the airport it's normally like five dollars or five to ten dollars for two suitcases something like that i i tell people go to the atm or get into a branch take a 100 dollar bill and just ask for really small dominations, five ones and fives. And that's it. I don't know. Take $70 with you, take a hundred dollars with you, leave here, leave there. Just, uh, they don't make a lot of money. And if the service is good, you know, they'll, 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 they'll be happy. Why not? You know, it's, it's only for you. It's only a hundred dollars. It shouldn't be a big deal. But again, if, if it's, if a hundred dollars to mine, you don't want, you can give 10, you can give zero. You don't, tips they're not going to charge you for it it's really up to you some people tend to tip more some people don't tip or uh tip less um when we were talking about you know excursions uh there are multiple options i um i recommend to book at least one uh one tour for the, the clients uh, for the most part, uh, they'll be able to change date if they need to. You can find out if the resort has uh, an, a hospitality desk with the suppliers. Um, the all of the AM resorts will have Amstar with them. All of the blue the the blue diamonds are going to have Nexus in them. You kind of kind of you'll need to find out who has what. And then that's probably going to be the best one to book for that specific property, where if there's a desk on site, they can always go there and make some changes if they want. If the weather is bad, if it's going to rain in two days, um, they can go and switch it up. And then you already they're already paid in full. You, you'll get the commission for it. Uh, so it is an option. Um, so I normally recommend at least one. I will also do transfers uh, for clients. I almost always do private transfers. I don't do share transfers. Um, uh, if the resort is in Playa del Carmen, which is 50 minutes away and it's a shared, it will take them two hours. First, like half an hour until they wait until everyone actually gets in the car. And then they're going to stop at multiple properties on the way. Uh, some transfers will say we do max three stops. Some will say it's shared, but uh, we only go to this specific property. So there are levels of transfers. Um, 
as a rule of thumb, if you have at least three clients, private transfer is most likely going to be cheaper than shared because shared is paid per person. If you have a family for four and you ever sold them in a shared transfer, they 99%, I can guarantee that a private transfer would have been the same or cheaper. Um, so take a look at that. Again, it's uh, maybe as a general rule for every resort that you book, but there's a lot of them for all inclusives. Um, learn the destination, learn the area. I did a few videos. I did a video on Cancun. I did a video of Jamaica. Uh, take a look at that uh, where I go in more details about uh, the different areas and more like concepts of all inclusives. Um, but I believe that would cover the introduction to uh, all inclusive. Let me know if anyone has any questions before I terminate the recording.